Okay, so this one dropped yesterday and we don't really have a full analysis ready for you yet, but we kind of have some first impressions, I guess. Um, FSR 3.1, uh, the rendition of AMD's uh, upscaler that has new spatial uh, quality improvements, has quote unquote dropped. It's arrived on pretty much the entirety of Nixis uh, PlayStation ports for PC. Right. Um, I've had a very, very quick look at it. And Alex, you've had a very, very short time to grab a couple of captures and compare it to your legacy FSR 2.2 captures. Yes. So I guess we'll go straight to you on that. Okay. So uh, just as a quick, what is FSR 3.1? FSR 3.1 is going to update both the frame generation and the uh, spatial temporal upscaling component of FSR to make it so that one, the frame generation can be used with any form of anti-aliasing or no anti-aliasing or upscaling. So that means you could use FSR3 frame gen with DLSS, for example. And the 3.2 space, sorry, 3.1 spatial temporal upscaler is going to apparently see improvements according to AMD. And I have only had it for just like an hour and I've loaded yeah. up uh, Horizon, Z, uh, Horizon Forbidden West and I wanted to compare it to my uh, legacy recordings. I'm having a bit of trouble getting those legacy recordings off a hard drive at the moment. So I only have access to this that you're seeing right here. And that's a, a comparison, a still image comparison right now of Aloy swinging her baton or I don't know, her pointy stick uh and uh you can see that in movement this was the image that i used uh for my xcss 1.3 video uh this fsr 2.2 versus fsr 3.1 i think the primary difference you'll see is that uh the internal structure like the internal details of aloy have less of a pixelated look to them but if you still look at them in comparison to the left image of FSR 2.2, you'll still see that like the edges are aliased and it does have like this kind of crunchy look to it. Uh, it just has a less raw internal look uh, to those pixels. And I think that is really obvious when you put it, it like this image shows here of FSR 2.2 next to 3.1. And then that's next to the XMX version of XCSS 1.3. And that is next to the um, DLSS 3.7. These are all in 1440p balance mode, by the way, or the mm -hmm. equivalent, proper equivalent for XCSS with the right internal resolution. I'm not, <laughs> you know, that's, it's really annoying, but that's the way it is. That um, was annoying, wasn't it? Yeah. That's face facts. <laughs> it is annoying, but uh, I have to make sure the labels are right there. Um, either way, here you'll be seeing essentially that if you put them all next to each other, you still actually see that same hierarchy that I, that I showed off before, uh, mainly because, um, XCSS and DLSS do attempt anti-aliasing on moving pixels, uh, and they do a pretty darn good job of it. Like you can really see that in the hair or on the edge of like any of the objects. Uh, they have a different look to them due to stylization that partially occurs uh, as a result of the AI, but they also do anti-aliasing at the same time. Uh, so I still think um, with this, update to 3.1 at least in this first little testing i have of side by side images it is still very close to what we saw in fsr 2.2 and the main thing that this comparison here is trying to show is that when objects move with fsr in general that they kind of get like a a pixelated look to them and they lack anti-aliasing and that's one of the more distracting image quality issues with fsr um, so it is really similar in that aspect. It's not actually really so different, but there are other aspects of FSR 2s that have issues like the way it handles particles. Uh, specifically, I'm going to look at like disocclusion. Uh, I'm going to look at more things in motion, different types of motion. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to make a video to see whether or not those things look dramatically different. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we'd all like to see that. I mean, um, uh, I did have a quick go on it this morning, and uh, this is a really subjective take, but you know, I think this image kind of demonstrates that the hierarchy of upscaling remains as it was, but there is a qualitative bump uh, to, to FSR now, which is welcome. But you know, I played uh, two versions of Ratchet and Clank 4K with uh, FSR2 quality, which always look you know, okay, and it still does. Go down to 1440p balanced, uh, which is what you've done here. And um, yeah, 
it, it starts to look a little crunchy, as you say, a little pixelated. And um, if you just switch on a NVIDIA card to uh, uh, a DLSS balanced, that just goes away. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's not, you know, it's quite interesting that the sort of reaction to your tweet, Alex, is like, it's like okay, here comes the... Here comes the uh, the pixel zooming, but you know it it's definitely visible, and I think people realise that with the existing version of FSR two, and this is kind of more of an iterative improvement. Yeah, I think that's my my take on it. I don't so really far. think there's too much more we can say about it right now because it literally arrived like sort of end of play Thursday. We filmed a direct on Friday, and here we are with just very very early first impressions. But it's good to see. Um, that there are improvements, obviously, because, you know, it is the most uh, widespread upscaler uh, that's accessible to a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, interesting stuff. I'm also curious to see um, whether the FSR3 frame generation that allows for input from anywhere actually extends to other games, because obviously we've already seen this in Ghost of Tsushima before the update. Right. So um, I'm curious if this is actually a feature that's inherent to FSR 3 frame generation or yeah. if it's something different that's inherent to what Nixis have done with their Im implementation of it. Right. Because that's kind of like the combination that as an NVIDIA Turing or Ampere owner, you would want to see, right? DLSS with uh, FSR 3 frame gen. Um, because obviously DLSS 3 frame gen isn't available on those older cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just uh, some things about my video. Let's let's really all pray that I can save these <laughs> files that I have on my hard drive. I've lifted one video so far, uh, but it happened to be the wrong video, uh, so that annoyed me to, to, to a great degree. <laughs> um, I was like, I looked through, I scrolled through, it, and I was like, this is not the right video, and the other ones are currently not loading. So we'll we'll hope and pray there. But one thing about my video, like all videos covering. Um, uh, image reconstruction on Digital Foundry, where there's a zoom, uh, just to let it out there. The reason why I zoom is not because you you look at a game zoomed in, it's for didactic reasons of showing what the difference is, uh, usually for someone on a small screen, aka a phone, which is a huge part of our, our audience are watching our videos on phones. 50%. Uh, yeah. And I think the whole point is that I'm not just doing a, like a generic test case where I say, oh, after the fact, I'm zooming in to tell you what's up. No, I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm finding an area where I literally see differences with my normal eyes and then <laughs> showing the, you know, like, yeah, you know, just normal. I'm watching them play in a game and then I record it. That's the whole and point. Then, because then otherwise you break I would out just, your abnormal eyes. <laughs> and I bring out the abby normal eyes. And, uh, yeah, no, but so that's all didactic stuff. And a bit of, I'm curious to see if other things are, uh, different really with the particles thing. Cause that's like a, very consistent thing across all games with FSR2. So I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah, it applies to like vegetation and water and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, other semi-transparent, uh, alpha tested, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, John, you didn't really have a chance to look at this, did you? I have nothing to say on this because okay, I have not enough. seen it in action. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking forward to your video there then, Alex. Mm -hmm. What can I say? I am uh, too. It's probably going to be a bit more exciting than Auto SR on the Snapdragon X Elite, which uh, is is kind of looks to be just a pretty simple post process thing at the moment. Spoilers, yeah. but we might have a discussion about that next week. Let's see.